Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I'm also a technical consultant for Altium. And today we are going to be talking about a viewer question that looks at how to do coplanar routing and how to calculate the impedance of coplanar differential pairs. Now, we got a great viewer question on our USB on a two layer board video. We're gonna look at that and we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into PCB impedance calculators so we can see how they actually work and why you might not be able to duplicate values on different calculators. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that viewer question. GLH Videos writes, I am unable to find an online calculator that duplicates your values. In fact, I cannot find two calculators that each give the same values, and none of them have the top side grounds in the calculations, just the two signal traces. The Altium product does not support Linux, so I cannot use that either. My issue is that I need to implement USB-C 2.0 high speed on a two layer board. Okay, so I understand what you're going through. You have a differential pair impedance that you need to calculate. You want to do it with a coplanar arrangement, kind of like we described as an option in that other video, but you don't have a coplanar impedance calculator. Well, there are some options for you. So we're going to look at that in this video, and I'll show you some calculators or some methods that you can use to try and figure out what the uh, impedance is going to be when you have coplanar arrangement with ground. So first things first, you had mentioned here later in the question, your presentation would have provided the solution if you also showed values for 10 mil spaces instead of only five mil spaces. Well, guess what? Just for you, I'm actually gonna do the calculation with 10 mil spacing right now inside Altium Designer. To do this, I'm inside Altium Designer. I'm just gonna go and create a new PCB and we will go to Design, Layer Stack Manager, open up the Layer Stack Manager, go to the Impedance tab, set our thickness to 62 mils, grab an Impedance Profile, Differential Coplanar, and then here you'll notice that if I set my trace gap to 10 mils and target impedance to 100, I get a trace width of 12.394 mils. Pretty simple, that's with a DK of 4.8, so that would be with a, like a thick core layer. Other option here, let's say we take the clearance, so the uh, sidewall clearance from the trace edge to the ground pour. Let's say we make that 10 mils, there we go. We now have our width of 16.334 mils. So you've got a couple of arrangements that you can use here. We did one for 10 mil spacing with five mil clearance and then 10 mil spacing with 10 mil clearance. Hopefully that gives you the answer you need. You can get started. Now, as to your other questions about online calculators, I actually wanna dive into that because there are some reasons that online calculators give different values. It relates to the sets of equations that are used in online calculators. So let's take a look at the different calculation methods and we'll be able to see pretty quickly why the different calculation methods give different results. Different methods for impedance calculations that are used for transmission lines. You know, I've pulled all these up here on the screen. So the simplest method here is with the IPC 2141 equations. And these equations I've put here for the accuracy in this table that they are the lowest accuracy. There should be an asterisk next to that. There is a specific situation in which they are low accuracy, and I'll describe what that is in just a moment. But they're also very easy to use. The, the equations are very simple. I mean, you literally just you know plug in your values for your trace geometry, and you're gonna get an answer. And therefore, the time required to use them is also lowest. Now, Waddle's equations, and we will provide a link to Waddle's textbook for anyone who wants to buy it. Um, Waddle's equations are much more accurate. Um, they can be much more difficult, so that is the trade-off that you have there, They're, those equations are more difficult. And the time to use them is, well, moderate to high because there's some bookkeeping involved with all the equations that you have to use. But there are calculators out there that will use these two sets of equations. So the IPC 2141 equations and Waddle's equations. So if you're getting different results from different calculators, it's because they're using different sets of equations. And if they don't state which equations they're using on their pages, 
then you may not know it. You would have to actually look at the code that goes into that calculator in order to determine which equations they're using. Or you just have to hope that they put the actual equations on the page and tell you which equations that they're using. The next level of impedance calculation, which I think is the best trade-off between accuracy and difficulty, is a 2D field solver. And this is a standard method that um, the more advanced PCB design software applications will use to get an impedance calculation. And this is actually what Altium Designer uses. So this is a 2D field solver. It has very high accuracy. The difficulty is really low because you're just plugging in values for your trace width, your height above the reference plane, and then the copper weight. So you just plugging in some numbers and it gives you a value. Um, and then the time required to use them is obviously pretty low. Cause like I said, you're just entering in some numbers. It's kind of a bl black box as far as what goes on inside the guts of that calculator, but it gives you a, an answer and that answer tends to be very accurate. And it is that type of application that is uh, normally used for like coplanar arrangements, especially coplanar arrangements on two layer boards, uh, the type of which you wanted to actually calculate for your differential pairs. So the next two highest levels of accuracy versus difficulty are a 2D field solver with losses. And there should be a little bit of an asterisk here too, which means they're also operating in the frequency domain. So you might get values at different frequencies. That is also very high accuracy. Those also tend to be very low difficulty. The solution time in terms of how long the algorithm has to run to give you a uh, result can be longer. So I've put a moderate here for the time. And then the most complicated is a 3D field solver. Field solvers all operate on the same principle. They're basically just solving Maxwell's equations in using a numerical scheme. They take the differential equations that are Maxwell's equations, they convert them to a big iterative arithmetic problem. And that arithmetic problem could be solved by hand and it's just that it could conceivably in involve millions of calculations that you would have to do by hand. And so because of that, it is an intractable problem for a human to do. It's not impossible, it is just intractable, meaning it could take a very, very long time. And so for that reason, we implement that type of solution on a computer. So the accuracy of those methods is highest, the difficulty in using those tools is also highest among all of these different uh, options here. And then the time involved is also longest because those uh, tools have to run this algorithm for a very long time in order to converge to a solution. Why are IPC 2141 and Waddle's equations normally used? Well, first of all, they're just equations, right? You can plug, you can write a calculator application that's gonna, you know, calculate whatever you want from these equations. Waddle's equations and IPC 2141 are shown here. IPC 2141 for a microstrip, this is only accurate for 50 ohm traces and at sufficiently low frequency. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that this model was actually developed from a bunch of data from different microstrips. And it's essentially developed just by looking at 50 ohm traces. So it's a model that was developed only for 50 ohms. It was using data on 50 ohms, so it's only gonna be accurate at 50 ohms. So if you tried to use the IPC 2141 equation to calculate the impedance of say a 40 ohm trace, like you might need for DDR, well, you're not gonna get the right answer. Waddle's equations are much more accurate because they apply to any impedance value. So they're gonna be accurate for any impedance value as long as you stick within certain limits. They also give you a much more accurate value for the effective dielectric constant. Whereas in the IPC 2141 equations, you can see it's basically just dK plus square root of two, and that's it, which is, well, which is known to be wrong. So this is another reason that IPC 2141 is inaccurate. So it could be because Number one, you're too far out of the DK spec that was used to actually develop the 2141 equations, or it's because you're not trying to calculate the, the values for a 50 ohm trace, you might be calculating for a different impedance trace. We have the same thing going on with strip lines. Strip line impedance equations are shown here. And again, the IPC 2141 equations are uh, much simpler to use. There's just fewer of them and you don't have these dimensional conditions that you have in Waddle's equations. And the same points account here as well. So these are only accurate for 50 ohm traces in IPC 2141, whereas in Waddle's equations, they are highly accurate for any impedance. They are a bit more complex to use. So that's the trade-off that you have here is you have a little bit more complexity, but you get more accuracy. I'm gonna show just an example here of a couple of different impedance calculators that you can use to get uh, some values for like a coplanar microstrip, let's say. So here we have one from Chimandi. 
Here we have another one from SourceForge. My showing these two calculators does not constitute an official endorsement. I'm just showing them as options and just to mention that here's how you figure out which different equations they are actually using in the background. So again, not an official endorsement by myself or Altium. These are just a couple of options that you can find online. Now what the Chimandi equations are doing here is you're basically just putting in your values here that you wanna to use to calculate the impedance of this uh, coplanar microstrip. And if you scroll down here, um, here's one way that you can tell that they are using Waddle's formulas. First of all, they're just telling you that they're using Waddle's formulas, right? Because they list the name of his textbook right here, and then his name is the author. And then they tell you where to find the formulas uh, in the textbook. So obviously they are uh, using Waddle's equations. But if you see something like this where it has this k of k function, what that is is an elliptical integral of the first kind. So it is this mathematical integral. I've never calculated one. Um, this is the only context in my career in which I've ever had to use an elliptical integral. But um, that is what this means, this capital K as a function of little k uh, function. Waddle's equations make copious use of elliptical integrals of the first kind. So if you see this in the equations for the calculator that you're looking at online, it is probably using Waddle's equations. Now, here's another really good one from SourceForge. And again, not an official endorsement, but I say it's really good because it provides a lot of detail. And uh, this one can be a little tough to use because there are dimensionalist restrictions on this. The problem is that it doesn't actually say what those dimensional restrictions are in this web page. So if I put in some, you know, kind of crazy values here, like 100 mil trace spacing or something like this, and I tell it to analyze stuff, you know, it's good. It might give me some warning here. It might give me, uh, you know, not a number as some of the results. It'll give NAN. When that happens, it's not giving you an accurate calculation. So that's something to consider here. So it's one of the reasons I don't like this type of page because there's just not enough uh, context to be able to understand, number one, what method it's using, or number two, how to use it properly to ensure that you get accurate results. Now, the last part of your question that we'll address, you had asked about a coplanar differential pair calculator. Now, unfortunately, I've never seen one online that is specifically differential pairs with coplanar. What I'd like to do is just kind of introduce you to one of the sets of equations here in Waddle's textbook. Now, here in Waddle's textbook, if you go to page 196, on page 196, section 4.4.3, you will see here we have the edge coupled coplanar waveguide set of equations uh, for the impedance. And the impedance in this structure is divided up into an odd mode and an even mode set of equations. So the odd mode here is with the subscript O, and then the even mode here is with the subscript E. And there's quite a few different parameters that go into this, and of course, you can see here, we have these elliptical integrals of the first kind that go into this calculation for the impedance in this structure. Now, this structure also has a structural constraint that's listed here. So this spacing value plus 2W plus 2D, so plus the widths here, and then this distance, basically this entire distance across this track where my mouse is, has to be less than the height above the ground plane. So this set of equations is only accurate in a certain situation, which is when the coplanar waveguide is sufficiently small compared to the thickness of the substrate above its ground plane. Now, that will certainly apply in a 62 mil board because if you look here, what we found was that if we have, let's say, uh, in a 10 mil trace gap plus 16 mil wide traces, that's 32, 42, and then clearances of 10 mils on each side gives us 62 mils exactly for the span across this, uh, this substrate, that is gonna be right at the upper limit of what you could also calculate with Waddle's equations. So you could use Waddle's equations to get that same impedance specification that we calculated here inside of Altium Designer. Now, the issue is that you've got multiples of these elliptical integrals of the first kind for this coplanar arrangement, and so you gotta program all of that into a calculator. I just haven't found one online. Does it mean that you can't do it? 
Well, certainly not, because there are other calculators out there that actually do use elliptical integrals of the first kind, and I would invite anybody out there who's watching this video to actually create a calculator based on this set of equations, and I would love to share it out there on social media for you and help promote it. So definitely do that. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section. Send an email off to youtube at altium.com if you have any insight on this, and I'd love to, to get you on and talk about it. One other thing to, to remember is that if you're gonna get this textbook and start using it, you know, here we have this dimensional condition here at the bottom of this model. Same thing applies in some of these other models that are specified here in this textbook. So here in the very next section, we have something on edge coupled microstrip lines in section 4.5 or 4.5.1, I should say. And so you can already see here, just to get the a really accurate model or a really accurate calculator for this particular set of equations for uh, differential microstrips, I mean, just look at the number of parameters here. It's a lot. In fact, as we scroll through here, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of equations, 70 equations that you have to deal with in order to turn this into a calculator. So to get really accurate results with an online calculator that uses equations, sometimes it takes a lot of effort and there are a lot of equations that you have to program into those calculators. And for some people, they just haven't done it because it is a lot of work and it's also error prone. That's why we have these cool tools like we have in Altium Designer to be able to calculate this stuff really quickly. All right, everybody. So thanks for sitting through this. I hope this provides a lot of context for how some of these applications work and why they might give different values. It is because they are using different sets of equations. Also in this coplanar waveguide issue, um, you know, you kind of have to use a field solver in order to get an accurate value for uh, coplanar waveguides. Um, the reason is that these models that are analytical and that are found in textbooks, while you can do them by hand, they can be very difficult. Hopefully this helps answer that question. We love getting your comments and questions. Please leave your questions in the comment section. You can also send them off to YouTube at altium.com because we're gonna be doing some more Q&A videos coming up soon and we love getting your questions. So send them in to us. All right, thanks everybody. And uh, definitely don't forget to call your fabricator.